Hello, everyone. Welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. And today we're bringing you a very, I would say, embarrassing lesson for us men. Right. Embarrassing for men, but I think it's okay for women. <laughs> That's right. We're going to be talking about buying underwear, specifically women's underwear. Right. So, um, Obviously, not the favorite thing for men to do. Well, apart from being a little bit uncomfortable, it's also boring. Yeah, it involves shopping, right? <laughs> it involves shopping, so we, we're not really big on that. All right, but well, even though it might be a little bit of an uncomfortable、um, topic, there is some great language in here, isn't there? Yeah, there's some really good words, and of course,、uh, the different types of underwear that we're going to be looking at. Yeah. But we also have some words that we're going to take a look at before we get into our dialogue, so let's start with vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. Well, we're going to look at two words that will appear in our dialogue, and the first one is lingerie. 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 Okay, so lingerie. This is a nice fancy word,、mm-hmm. basically for underwear, right? Right, for women's underwear. Women's underwear. Yeah. So lingerie, but it's very nice, very like pretty, sexy, sexy yeah. underwear. Yeah. yeah. Now the spelling of this word is interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's spelled L I N. G E R I E lingerie lingerie yes don't you love English spellings <laughs> so women's nice pretty sexy underwear that's right and our second word awkward 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 so this is a feeling that men have especially when they're buying women's underwear well yeah you feel a little bit uncomfortable、yeah. or it's a strange situation or weird or、yeah. out of place it's awkward yes. All right, so we're going to be hearing both of these two words in the dialogue. Now, Marco, where are we here? We're going to be at a department store at the section where they have women's、uh, lingerie, and we have a guy buying underwear for his girlfriend. All right, well, let's find out what happens. This sucks. I hate buying lingerie. Okay, just find something and get out of here. All right, these are fine. Oh no! Don't come over here! Don't come over here! You look a little lost. Can I help you? Um, I'm just having a look around. It's my girlfriend's birthday tomorrow. I'm trying to find her something. Well, you can't give her granny panties. Have you thought about getting her some sleepwear?、Mm-hmm. We've got these lovely silky nighties. Or how about some nice panties and a bra set? Look. Here's a nice satin push-up bra, and you can choose a few different styles of undies to go with it. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> This is so awkward. What ones do I pick? What size is she? Well, do you want a thong? Some bikini briefs? Maybe this nice pair of lacy boy shorts. Just pick something and get the hell out of here. Um, I'll go with these two. This is mortifying. I just want to get this over with, and she better thank me for this. Here you are, sir. I'm sure she'll enjoy them. Finally. I'm sorry, sir. I'm going to have to take a look inside your bag. Oh, the poor guy! I totally feel bad for him. Yeah, he was really nervous, and of course, it was very uncomfortable for him. I know. And then the security guard <laughs> shows up. Exactly. And- <laughs> But we had the opportunity to take a look at some really great words and phrases. So let's start off with our first one in language takeaway. Language takeaway. All right. Well, we're going to look at words here that mostly have to do with underwear, describing underwear. Right. And the first one is granny panties. Granny panties. Granny panties. This isn't like a real, real word, right? It's not something you'll find in a dictionary. No, it's a slang word,、um, and we use it to describe really big, ugly underwear, like your grandmother would wear. <laughs> All right, so they're not like the sexy little underwear. It's、no. more like long, and it's not very appealing. Just、though. picture what your grandmother would wear. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so granny panties. So obviously,、um, this guy doesn't want to be buying any of those. But the saleswoman suggests that he try some sleepwear. 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 Okay, so sleepwear. Obviously, clothes you wear when you're sleeping. Now this is really interesting because men aren't really that complicated when it comes to sleeping. Just throw on a t-shirt and that's it. Well, 
obviously for women, there are more <laughs> options and, and more different things you can choose from. So okay. It's a whole separate category for I women. Know. Even when you're sleeping, you must wear something nice. Yes. One type of sleepwear is silky 90s. 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 N I G H T I E S. Okay, so a 90. Um, it's basically a dress that you wear when you sleep. Okay. Now, the pronunciation is interesting because the first five letters are night. Right. Right? But you don't say night. You don't say nighty. You say nighty. Yeah, you, you make the T a D. Mm. Nighty. Now, she offered him some silky nighties. Right. So, silky. Obviously, we know silk is right. a soft, shiny fabric, right? Right. So when something is silky, it's either made from silk or it's Similar. soft and shiny. Okay, so yep. some silky 90s, very soft, shiny uh, 90s. Exactly. Okay. What about our next word? Well, the sales girl offers different styles of undies. 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 So undies is an interesting word. It's basically short for underwear. Underwear, okay. Mm -hmm. So you can just call underwear undies. Yes. But I think you mostly use this when you're talking about women's underwear. Oh, really? I mean, I don't know if I would say undies when I'm talking about men's underwear. No, I don't think so. Maybe children's underwear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For children. For yep. children, right? Yep. Okay. All right. So we saw some of the different types of clothing, but now let's take a look at this interesting adjective, mortifying. Mortifying. This is mortifying. Mortifying. Okay. So when something is mortifying. Well, I think we've got some examples to show you what that is like. Example one. And then I fell in front of everyone. It was mortifying. Example two. I was completely mortified when I realized what I had done. Example three. It must have been mortifying for her when she realized that her underwear was showing. So basically, it's very embarrassing. Super embarrassing. You want to die almost. Yep. Okay. Which is I, interesting. I mean, mort. Right. From yeah. death, French. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, um, etymology here at English Pod. <laughs> All right. So some interesting. Okay. So we saw the different types of underwear. We saw this really great word for when you're really embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So now let's take a look at some of the phrases that you would use when you're really embarrassed in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. All right, well, we have two phrases to look at here. The first one, get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. Okay, so if I say I want to get the hell out of here. You want to leave this place really quickly. Really quickly. Yes. Just, I want to leave. Right now. Now, when you're using this, this phrase or this sentence, uh, get the hell out of here, is it really polite? No, of course not. It's it's impolite. Okay, so it's, it's really negative. Very negative and informal, right? Yeah, yeah. So you would use this maybe with your friends or th like in this case, think it to yourself. Yes, but it's not a good idea to use with your boss or your mother. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. I guess sometimes depending on the tone you use, mm. how you say it, you can sound really angry, right? Definitely. Right. Okay. All right. Well, let's listen to some examples. Example one. This place is scary. Let's get the hell out of here. Example two. What are you doing in my house? Get the hell out of here. Example three. We were at a friend's party and all of a sudden her parents arrived. We got the hell out of there as quickly as possible. All right, so... Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. Now let's take a look at our last phrase for a fluency builder. Get this over with. Get this over with. I want to get this over with. So you want to finish it really quickly. But you want to finish it because you're not really enjoying it, right? Exactly. This is something that you use when the situation is negative. It's negative. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I just want to get this over with. Yeah. I want to get this test over with. I want to get this day over with. I want to get this. Maybe if you're on a bad date, I want to get this date over with. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right, well, interesting phrases, and I think it would help us to hear them once more in context in the dialogue.
This sucks. I hate buying lingerie. Okay, just find something and get out of here. All right, these are fine. Oh, no, don't come over here. Don't come over here. You look a little lost. Can I help you? Um, I'm just having a look around. It's my girlfriend's birthday tomorrow. I'm trying to find her something. Well, you can't give her granny panties. Have you thought about getting her some sleepwear? Mm. We've got these lovely silky nighties, or how about some nice panties and a bra set? Look, here's a nice satin push-up bra, and you can choose a few different styles of undies to go with it. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> this is so awkward. What ones do I pick? What size is she? Well, do you want a thong? Some bikini briefs? Maybe this nice pair of lacy boy shorts. Just pick something and get the hell out of here. Um, I'll go with these two. This is mortifying. I just want to get this over with, and she better thank me for this. Here you are, sir. I'm sure she'll enjoy them. Finally. I'm sorry, sir. I'm going to have to take a look inside your bag. All right, so I guess the situation is very common. Men either having to shop for this type of article for their girlfriend or wife mm -hmm. because it's their birthday. Yep. Or sometimes we get dragged into a store to, to buy this So stuff. you're shopping with your girlfriend and she's going to make you go look at underwear with her. <laughs> yeah. I usually don't do that, though. I'll just uh, go to the next section and just look around. Look at tools. Or... Look at <laughs> TVs and yeah. Playstations. Yes. <laughs> But you know what? I have seen some men who go shopping with their girlfriends or wives and actually enjoy buying underwear. See, that's the thing. I think... It, it it makes sense, but I don't know how comfortable you would actually be. I don't know why. I guess it's just the how it indicates sexuality and yeah. all this stuff. Oh, well. Like I could do it for maybe five or ten minutes, give my professional advice, and yeah. then I'm out of there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, maybe those guys who look like they're enjoying themselves are just really talking in their heads, um, <laughs> telling themselves how much they hate this. Exactly. Maybe they're just uh, they're pretending, pretending, or listening to their iPod. Well, tell us. Well, guys, I know we've got a lot of male listeners. Tell us what you think um, are you embarrassed by women's underwear right or women why aren't you embarrassed when you buy men's underwear for your boyfriend or husband i think there's a lot to talk about here <laughs> so come to our website at englishpod.com right leave your questions and comments and of course tell us what you think about this topic well thanks for downloading this lesson and until next time goodbye Bye. everyone, welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. And today we're bringing you an advanced lesson for all of our advanced learners out there. That's right. And in this lesson, we're visiting a history class. Yes, uh, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic that's known around the world, which is International Workers' Day. That's right. And we're going to learn a little bit about the history of um, the workers' movement in the United States. Right, but we're also going to be taking a look at some great words and, of course, a little bit more advanced or complicated structures. That's right. So, uh, I guess without further ado, we can get started with the dialogue. All right, everyone, settle down. Let's get started. As you know, an important aspect of becoming a good citizen is understanding the genesis of our legal system. It's not enough to simply memorize our laws. It's necessary that we comprehend why and how they were formed. This brings me to our topic for today. Does anyone know what we celebrate on May 1st? Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's, that's May 5th in Spanish, James. No wonder you're failing my Spanish class. No, May 1st is International Workers' Day. Do we get a day off from school then? No. It is not considered to be a national holiday here in the U.S., but in other countries it is. Oh, man. In the 19th century, working conditions were appalling, with workers being forced to work 10, 12, and 14 hours a day. Support for the eight-hour workday movement was growing rapidly, despite the indifference and hostility of many union leaders. And by April 1886, 250,000 workers were involved in the May Day movement. 
Previous legislative attempts to improve working conditions had failed, so labor organizers took drastic measures. They passed a resolution stating that eight hours would constitute a legal day's work. And on May 1st, 1886, the resolution took effect. Cool. Is that why we only work eight hours now? Yes. But the happy ending came at a high price. On May 3rd, 1886, police fired into a crowd of strikers at the McCormick Reaper Works Factory, killing four and wounding many. A mass meeting was called for the next day to protest the brutality. And then what happened? Well, as we say, the rest is history. All right, so we were in a history class and we learned something new, something interesting, right? Yeah, International Workers' Day. Um, It's it's not celebrated in the U.S., but in many other countries it is. Right, on May 1st, Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people have a day off, so that's always good. Yes. All right, so why don't we take a look at some of the words that we saw in this dialogue, which were maybe a little bit different or difficult in Language Takeaway. Language Takeaway. All right, we're just going to look at five words here. And the first one, we talked about the genesis of the movement. Right, genesis. Genesis. Okay, so many of you may know that Genesis is a book in the Bible, right? That's right, and that's where this word comes from. It's Uh the first book in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So it's the beginning. Or the origin. Origin. Mm -hmm. So that's a genesis. So the genesis of our legal system, you would say. Right, or the genesis of this problem. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's the origin. Yeah, it's a little bit of a formal word, isn't it? Yeah, I guess maybe you can say the origin or the beginning. Yeah, but maybe in in an academic setting, Mm -hmm. you can talk about the genesis. Yes, very good. All right, what do we have next? Well, one of the reasons why the the workers' movement got started was because of the appalling working conditions. Mm -hmm. Appalling. Appalling. If something is appalling. It's shockingly bad very very bad yeah so now if something is appalling like the working conditions were appalling that's right you would feel appalled exactly i'm appalled at your behavior okay so it's almost like you are disgusted yeah that's right yeah very very strong word yeah very strong okay okay so the working conditions were appalling and people were setting up this movement Mm -hmm. right but what happened They met some hostility. 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 Hostility from the police, right? That's right. So what is hostility? Um, Hostility is the state of of receiving an unfriendly reaction. Okay. They acted in a very unfriendly way, and it also suggests, you know, a hint of violence even. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if somebody is hostile, they can maybe be aggressive and maybe to a point violent. That's right. Okay. So a hostile person. Yeah, or a hostile environment, a dangerous environment. Okay, hostility, hostile. Very good. Yeah. Now, because of these appalling working conditions, the labor movement decided to take drastic measures. Drastic measures. Yeah, drastic measures. This is a really wonderful phrase, and I think it would help us to listen to a few examples of this phrase in use. Example one. The president was faced with some difficult decisions and was forced to take drastic measures to solve the crisis. Example 2. The police took very drastic measures to control the protesters outside the government palace. So we understand drastic measures as extreme actions or decisions, right? Yeah, exactly. I think there's a saying that says... Desperate times call for drastic measures? No, desperate times call for desperate measures. Uh Dang. (laughs) Well, okay, but it goes around there somewhere, right? Something like that. If if you really have an emergency, you need to do something drastic. You have to take drastic measures, or you can even say take drastic action. Okay, very good. And what about our last word? After the protests ended uh, in violence, um, people started to get angry because of the brutality the police showed. Okay, brutality. Brutality. So again, maybe brutality and hostility are maybe similar, right? A little bit similar. So brutality is the state of being harsh or very forceful. Okay, so brutality. Now, we also use the word brutal. Right, so that means harsh or very forceful. 
Now, sometimes we can use that word, but not in a harsh or forceful way, right? Yeah, and it's it's quite yeah. I I might say something like, "Oh my God, that test was brutal." Uh huh. It was brutal, or so it was really hard or really difficult. Right. So that's what you're saying with this word that it's very hard or it was very intense. Yeah. Maybe one more one more example. Okay. So for example, I can say. Oh, I went for a run today, and it was brutal. I'm so, so tired. So it was really difficult. Yes, yeah, brutal. And Marco, is this something that's used by everyone? That phrase "brutal" using in in that context would be for younger people, maybe. Not mm. really. You wouldn't really hear older people using it. Like so that. it's a little bit slangy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great, great. So those are、uh, five interesting vocabulary words. As Marco mentioned, we want to look at some more difficult structures now in Fluency Builder. Fluency builder. Okay, so we have some phrases that we saw in this dialogue, and well, let's start with the first one. Well, the teacher opens his discussion by talking about how an understanding of the legal system is an important aspect of being a good citizen. Okay, an important aspect. An important aspect. So, well, maybe we know the word important, right? So, what's、Obviously. an aspect? A, a part of something, an important part of something. Okay. So the teacher started with an important aspect of, and then specified the idea or what part it belongs to. Right. So it usually follows this form. Noun is an important aspect of noun. Okay. So, for example, quality control is an important aspect of keeping customers happy. Okay. Perfect. A part of. Very good. So aspect sounds a little bit more formal or just a lot more intelligent, right? Yeah, professional. And actually, this is a wonderful way of setting up your idea. So the teacher said that it's an, an important aspect of understanding the legal system was understanding its origins or、mm -hmm. its genesis. Yep. And then she moved on and said that it's not enough to simply memorize laws. That's right. It's not enough to simply do something. Okay. So the beginning of this sentence. It is not enough to simply. Something.、Mm -hmm. By starting a sentence like this, you are indicating that more is required, right? So here, it's not enough to simply memorize the laws. We're saying that most people just memorize the laws, but they need to go further and understand them. Exactly. Another example would be: It's not enough to simply pass your exams. You must get good grades as well. Right. Or maybe in a business context. It's not enough to simply satisfy your customers. You must impress them. Okay, very good. So that's a very good way of starting out this idea of more is required. That's right. More is required. All right. All right. Well, I want to move on to one final point here. I found this sentence to be really, really interesting. They passed a resolution stating that eight hours would constitute a legal day's work. Okay. So, why is this interesting? Well, I found that you know there's two verbs going on here. They passed a resolution that eight hours would constitute、okay. a legal day's work. So we've got two verb times going on here at the same time,、mm -hmm. and I'm wondering about this this one would. Okay, so what's happening here? Obviously, this happened in the past. It's like about a hundred years ago, right? Right. So the resolution was passed. A hundred years ago. Uh huh. Right. So it, this is going on in the past. Right. But there was a future action that was going to happen in consequence of this. Right. So the resolution stated that eight hours would constitute.、Mm -hmm. So th it's like the primary action was the passing of the resolution,、mm -hmm. and the result is this sort of this event that happens in the past, but is a future event to the first、yeah. primary event. <laughs> Does so, that make any sense at all? <laughs> so this is called the future in the past, right? That's right. Okay, so it's a it's a grammar structure. Many of you maybe know the simple present or or the or the future tenses, but this is a little strange one. And as we said, so maybe it's a little bit difficult to understand the grammar in general. So why don't we take a look at some more examples of how we would use this future in the past? Example one: The president said that he would cut taxes by five percent. Example two. I made a promise that I would not smoke anymore. Example three. Carl told me he would buy a new car. Okay, so now I think it's clear this whole idea of the future and the past, and well,、uh, we'll also be answering any questions on the site if you have any problems, right? That's right. Okay, so why don't we listen to the dialogue one more time? And then we'll come back and talk about this holiday, which is the International Workers' Day.
All right, everyone, settle down. Let's get started. As you know, an important aspect of becoming a good citizen is understanding the genesis of our legal system. It's not enough to simply memorize our laws. It's necessary that we comprehend why and how they were formed. This brings me to our topic for today. Does anyone know what we celebrate on May 1st? Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> no, that's, that's May 5th in Spanish, James. No wonder you're failing my Spanish class. No, May 1st is International Workers' Day. Do we get a day off from school then? No. It is not considered to be a national holiday here in the U.S., but in other countries it is. Oh, man. In the 19th century, working conditions were appalling, with workers being forced to work 10, 12, and 14 hours a day. Support for the eight-hour workday movement was growing rapidly, despite the indifference and hostility of many union leaders. And by April 1886, 250,000 workers were involved in the May Day movement. Previous legislative attempts to improve working conditions had failed, so labor organizers took drastic measures. They passed a resolution stating that eight hours would constitute a legal day's work. And on May 1st, 1886, the resolution took effect. Cool. Is that why we only work eight hours now? Yes. But the happy ending came at a high price. On May 3rd, 1886, police fired into a crowd of strikers at the McCormick Reaper Works factory, killing four and wounding many. A mass meeting was called for the next day to protest the brutality. And then what happened? Well, as we say, the rest is history. All right, so Erica, in Canada, do you celebrate this? We do, but not on May 1st. Oh, really? When is it? The first weekend in September. Oh, really? And why? Um, I am not 100% sure. <laughs> I think it's because we already have a long weekend in, in uh, May because we sell it because on the 24th of May is the Queen, Queen Victoria's birthday. So we have to celebrate that. Oh, we really? Can't, yeah, we can't have two vacations in the same month. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not productive, right? Exactly. Well, what about in Ecuador? Uh, yeah, we do. On May 1st, it's a, it's a holiday. And we actually have two holidays in May as well because on the 24th, we actually celebrate the Battle of Pichincha, which is one of the decisive battles for the independence of Ecuador. So we don't mind having two holidays in the same month. Well, it sounds like um, Ecuador is a better holiday schedule than <laughs> Canada. So no, it yeah. Is. So yeah, on May 1st, people take vacations and or companies usually on May 1st will do something special for their employees. Oh, that's kind of a nice gesture, isn't it? Yeah. So it's like it's Workers' Day. So they, they'll set up maybe a barbecue or a trip or something like that. So that's what usually happens on May 1st. Great. Well, what about in your country's listeners? Um, do you celebrate um, May Day? May Day. Yeah. <laughs> May 1st, right? And if you do, well, let us know. Come to our website, EnglishPod.com, and leave your questions and comments there as well. That's right. Well, thanks for downloading this lesson. And until next time, bye. Bye. Bye.